All right, so we are coming to you today to talk about web development. VS mobile app development. Okay. All right. So there's a lot of uh, students and also inquiries that I've received that say, hey, I want to learn mobile apps. I want to learn how to build a mobile app, but I'm not interested in learning how to, you know, full stack, learn full stack. Right. So based on your recommendations, um, how, how, what, what do you recommend these people to do? Okay, so before we get into the topic about mm. uh, trying to convince somebody whether they should learn mobile apps or learn full stack web application, mm. we have to understand the different types of mobile applications yeah. first, right? Yeah. So, um, are you are you able to differentiate what type of mobile applications out there or, or to a layman's eyes? Okay, to, they look, to a layman's yeah. eyes, I would say there's there's Apple apps, yeah. iOS. There's Android apps, okay. iOS. Uh, uh, and two. Android, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, these are the right. two, right? I mean, Commonly, people would say that. People who yeah. do not know would say that. Uh, okay, right. but um, many people. What many people didn't realize is that there are different types of applications. So number one is native apps. Mm. So like you said, right? Native. So uh, someone who learn how to write apps for Android, mm. and then the, he the whatever apps that he wrote will be able to run on Android only. It's more the operating system. So you think about Windows and Mac, right? Mm. Your you can't just take your Windows version of let's say, on the Mac. Photoshop. Uh, you cannot run on the Mac. You must get the Mac version of the Photoshop. Right. Right. right? So it's a similar similar uh, situation here. Right. So you if you write an app just on for Android platform, then you can only use it on Android platform. And mm. if you write an app that is only for iOS, then you can only run on iOS platform. Right. But okay. the advantage of that is that if you do that, then the apps are going to be more optimized. Yes, more optimized. So so for example, if you write uh, using Android, especially using Samsung SDK, then you can use the pen to do a lot of different mm. stuff. But then the same app, if you put it into uh, let's say iOS, you, you don't have you such don't have support. Yeah. Right. Okay. So okay. that that's number one. That's native apps. Okay. So number two is hybrid apps. So hybrid apps is actually uh, yeah you can see from the, the graph here right. <laughs> so we we take the same code but we wrap it in the wrapper. So okay. this wrapper can take the code that we wrote and automatically generate code that can run both on Android mm. and also iOS. Mm. Okay. So do you know any startups or any brands in Malaysia that does this? So most of the startups when they started, I don't really have a specific name, name. but but I can give you <laughs> a more famous startups, okay? Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. When they first started, they actually used uh, Ioni or the no, no back then was called PhoneGap and Cordova, those sort of technology. So it's similar mm. technologies mm -hmm. they built using uh, hybrid applications. Okay. So the characteristic of hybrid application is usually they are not graphic intensive. Mm -hmm. So uh, games usually they have to use native apps because of the the rendering. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of processing. But for, right for business application or some application like Facebook, etc., it, it's not hard. And Facebook, as, as it grows, then it encounters a lot of issues, a lot of problems, then they start to rewrite their own. They got money anyway. So they can they got resources to write into two different versions. Okay. Yeah, but most of the startups and new companies when they started, they usually start with one uh, hybrid application. Right, and right. for them to test the market, to build it as your MVP, yeah, there's a lot of advantages. It takes less time and less cost as well, right? Yeah. Because you build one for two. So you hire one person can write and do <laughs> two, two person jobs. Okay, so that's that's uh the hybrid using Ionic technologies. Yes. Right. And then the the last one is uh, web application. Okay. So a lot of the companies they they don't really have the uh, the luxury even just to build. Um, a mobile application, mm -hmm. okay, even even a hybrid, because the, still there's cost involved, and you need to test, you need to do rigorous testing. Mm -hmm. you, I, I I totally cannot remember how many different dimensions or form factors of Android different phone, phone uh, different sizes, yeah, different sizes, and some right. people use it in portrait mode, some people use it in landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. hold an iPad and you hold an iPhone, it's totally different, right? right. So mm -hmm. what they will do is they come up with a, a web app that's optimized for mobile application. Okay. So it's a mobile web application. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th these are the three main types of application. Okay. Okay. But something that is very common, um, uh, a common layer among these three things is. So this is a question for you, Ruben. Right. Imagine today you know how to build a mobile application already. Mm. Let's say you build an e-commerce application as usual. So somebody is able to come here to browse your your product. My, my app. Uh, yeah, right. App, my app. App, very very good user interface. Uh, yeah, they can enter. They enter can the search. products. Okay. How are you going to handle when somebody search for a product and they decided to place an order? 
and how are you going to integrate with the payment gateway? How are you going to send an email to the backend system okay. <laughs> so that they can capture their address, information, dispatch the orders, and then send them a push notification, etc. Mm. What? How are you going to do that? Okay, so I, I think commonly a lot of people think that it's all done here, uh-huh. but now what they say, there's a lot of things going behind, yes. behind the scenes. And, and that behind the scenes is? So that's where full stack web application uh. comes in. <laughs> yeah, okay? okay. So no matter whether you are using Facebook on a mobile application or you're using Facebook on the web, on, on the desktop browser, mm-hmm. the underlying mm-hmm. layer is always the same. They are connecting to Facebook servers, they are connecting to Facebook backend to retrieve the data, to store your information, to uh, get uh, get the data from the database. Yeah, so I, the, the word I'm trying to think of is uh, to use the API. Yeah, uh, to use the okay. API to get those information from the database. What, what are your thoughts on uh, mobile app builders? Mm, mobile app builders, a lot of time, I mean, they, they are too focused on the front end. The, your right. front end development. Um, not, that's not something wrong. I mean, when, when it goes into specialization, you, you can choose to be specialized in front end or back end. The reason I'm saying that you need to learn full stack is because a lot, there are some minor changes you, you probably can do it yourself and right. then you don't have to rely on somebody mm-hmm. or you understand how things work in the full spectrum. Okay. Yeah, that's easier for you to know what to do. And for example, right, one day you load out an app you, you, your user will start to complain that how come this app is loading so slow mm. and the first thing is that must be the apps developers fault yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but actually sometimes could be the data in the back end your database your it's queries is rendering right, so slow yeah your queries probably take 4 seconds to come back and then your front end rendering take 1 second but the total user experience for the user is 5 seconds mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so um, you, if you have full stack knowledge then it's easier for you to make tweaks uh, yes make tweaks, make tweaks. understand so, it, it, I mean, to, to, to sum it up, uh, learning mobile app development is possible, but you still need some background knowledge on full stack to supplement with tweakings, with edits, with revisions, uh, with okay. optimization. Yes, correct. So, so to, to clarify your queries, if you are somebody who, who learn, uh, who start from a mobile apps development, right? right? So you focus on the front end and you, you wouldn't lose anything if you become a full stack developer, meaning that you learn the entire spectrum and then you can choose to focus all right, uh, 80% of your time in, in front end, right? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. another 20% of your time on the servers and on the database side. Okay, that, that's one way of looking at it. But mm. on the other hand is, I, I started off as a full stack developer. I learned how to build website. Mm-hmm. And if I want to pursue, uh, we all know that eventually everybody is going to be to be on mobile anyway. Right? right. But Malaysia case is, is a bit unique because we started off with PCs and browsers. Mm. So our adoption rate for laptops and desktop computers is still much higher than, yeah, China, mobile phones yeah, than China and India. And whereas China and India's uh, fellas, they, they started off with their mobile, yeah, mobile phones first. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them don't even have a yeah, laptop. Don't, why, yeah. why do they need one, yeah. right? So, so I started off as a full stack developer and one day I see the trend so I realized, that, okay, fine. Now uh, my company needs to move on to the mobile. Right? I need to pick up the mobile application. Then I can still learn mobile application development skill and then to build mobile apps. Okay. Yeah. So uh, last question, right? So for startups and also businesses who are thinking to come out in the market, mm-hmm. let's say e-commerce. Right? Would you recommend them to jump into an application or start off with a web application? Now, for for startup company especially, you need full stack development because um, you can go straight into building a mobile website mm. and then you optimize it for. Uh, no, you can go straight to build a website and then you optimize it for your mobile application yeah. or for, for mobile phones. Right. And then from there, you can use that mobile phone to test your use case and then mm. to, to send the URL to your users and then they can try it on their mobile phone. Right, that is a very early stage of uh, idea validation or even right. your MVP testing stage. Right. And then from there, then you can decide, okay, do you really need a full native app or you just need a hybrid app? But most of the time, if you're not doing something that's very graphic intensive mm. or processing heavy, mm. um, hybrid app is more than enough. I see, I see. I mean, comes to case to case, I mean, what, what the startups want to do, what the, the business is all about. Uh, for example, people like Faith, Yep. They, are, they are mainly focused on their app, yep. right? So it really depends case to case basis, but there still is a need for full stack knowledge yep. to, to, to I mean to build a successful tech startup per yep. se. And, and don't forget as a, as a startup, you, you want to be able to move fast as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's the key.
All right. So I hope that answers. Uh, if you have questions about, you know, to learn mobile app development or full stack programming first, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, what are the other questions that you have when it comes to learning web technologies and also mobile technologies? Let us know in the comment section below, and we're always here to help and answer. All right. All right. See you again. Bye bye. Yeah.